Hello, my good friends. I'm just making a mess right now. How are you guys doing today? My name is Raga. I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I'm a teacher. And more importantly, today I'm your instructor. So how are you guys doing? Hi, Insomniac, how you doing? So I finally got my studio back for the most like. We might get a little bit of an interruption today, but I should have my studio back completely today so I get to decorate and I get to do all cool sorts of stuff. But I have been itching to draw with you guys. So how about we draw? How about we do something cool? How about we uh, get out of our heads because... Today, I let my social anxiety get to me. Uh, today, I was supposed to go meet up with my tattoo mentor for the first time. And um, not, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, I woke up, I was ready to go. And then I was like, oh, my God, I need to meet someone. I need to meet someone. Oh, my God. Oh my God. What are you doing? What's up? What's up? What do you want? You have two seconds before I kick you up. No, decline. Get the fuck out. Leave me alone. Bye. Bye. Jesus Christ, dude. Fucking waste of time. Every time. Every time is a waste of time. Hey, let's play a game. Let's play a stupid little game. Jesus Christ. Annoys the shit out of me every time. That's why I don't take lives from anybody. Because people are annoying. Anyways. What should we draw today? What should we learn today? I need to get out of my head because because uh, I suck. <laughs> I'm horrible. Like I was supposed to meet up with this person and I like can't find the damn like mental strength to go do it. Uh, how to connect the body to the head? Cool, done, easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So if you have your head and you're wondering how to connect that to the body. Like, you don't know how to connect your body to your ribcage. Right? I'm going to show you guys that today. That connecting point right there is actually quite simple if you think about it in a specific way. And once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. So it's really, really, really hard not to see it once you do it, see it the first time. And that is by breaking down your ribcage into a shape that's manageable. If you break your ribcage down to a shape that's manageable, that has actual guiding points, it's not really all that hard to understand how your neck works. If you think of your ribcage like an egg, and you think of a little circle at the top, that circle is going to be a little bit thinner than the rest of it, right? From there, if you draw a little cylinder or just a mass of volume up from those points, that's your neck. And your neck and your jaw are roughly the same size. You can always taper it a little after to make it look a little bit more stylized. But once you have those mapping points, it's really easy to understand the ratio between a ribcage and a head. And then from there, you just need a space that guides you to where your arms are going to go. And that is in the form of a compass. And that gives you the outside edge of your arm. And then you just draw all the volume inside. So you go from a structure to a silhouette situation, but it makes it super easy for you to draw your body parts. Because this compass is going to guide where your arm goes, the outside edge, and then you draw volume to the inside. And you get arms in a lot of different directions. Your audio sounds really good too. Oh, yeah, it's, it should be the, like, I, I'm in a bigger room right now. So I moved to my main room. I just made my main room my studio. Uh, you know, I don't sleep in my room most of the time. I just sleep in the couch with mustache most of the time. Uh, anyways, so it's, uh, you know, I never use my bedroom unless I have, like, company. And that doesn't happen very often. So it's like, why am I not making the most of my room? <laughs> you make it look so easy. Uh, how can I draw profiles? 
Uh, well, let's talk about this in profiles, right? If you're going to be connecting the rib cage and the head from a profile, it's still kind of like an egg, but you got to remember that this is a rib cage. This has a little curvature. And this is going to lead to your spine. So all this area is the back of your body. The back, pay attention to that. It's the back of your body. Not the front, not the middle. It's the back. The very back of it is your spine. That means that your rib cage has to have volume going forward. So that means that that little egg is going to be a little bit tilted in the front. Okay? Your spine is going to be at the connecting point at the very tippy top of your rib cage. That is going to be the top of your spine or the top of your rib cage into your head. So if you draw a little tiny thingy that comes out from there, that's your spine. And guess what's connected to the spine? The head. <laughs> So if you learn how to draw your heads like that, now you can tilt your heads in all sorts of directions because now it's a simple shape, okay? And then what you do is you connect this to the bottom part <laughs> and you have yourself a head. So understanding your neck, understanding that your spine is a big indicator of where your head is going to go, <laughs> right? Wherever you end up putting your spine, that's where your head is going to go. So if you learn how to control your spine, you're going to be able to control your head. And it's not that hard, right? It's an egg into a circle. And again, interruptions every fucking time. I'll be right back. Practice that for a second. Okay. All right. So let's get back to this. So the rib cage, a simple egg, right? That's the rib cage. The circle that you draw at the top should be around, like, if you want to go for like a very, very standard, it's about an eighth of the way up the body, but I like to do it about a fourth. Just because I don't like necessarily humanist, like my, my humans don't have to look real. They just have to look human. So as long as I have those ratios, which is easier to maintain, I can draw a cylinder and I have a perfect ratio for my rib cage and my head. That little cylinder that you draw up, if you don't know how far up to draw it, if you have that little cylinder, I would just rotate this cylinder up or down, and that's roughly the length of your neck. Just rotate it up, whoop, and then you have essentially your jawline. So check it out. You're going to have that. You're going to do that. And you essentially have your jawline, even for like harder situations. when you're looking up and stuff. It's just an interesting way that I see it. Like I haven't really broken it down to like a, a mapping thing yet. But from here, if you just draw a circle that's the same size, you get roughly the bottom part of your jaw. And then you end up in a situation where you can progress to the next part of the body. So let's do that a little bit bigger. I haven't done that like live. And I, I don't like I don't miss I don't like necessarily hate making mistakes. But let's see. If we draw like a cylinder, ooh, that actually works really nice. 
Interesting. And if you change the middle of the neck, that's where the muscles go. The compass will give you access to your forearm or your muscles and your endpoints for your arms. And then from there, you just create volume inside. And you can have boogie boogie oogie boogie nights. When is the How to Draw book coming out, Teach? Well, uh, now I finally opened up my schedule and I have like the mental space in my brain to be able to actually work on it. So now, now it's going to start coming at you guys at droves. Now it's about coming up with like at least two or three pages a day to be able to put the layout, to be able to put everything in. And then the content's already created. I already created all the content for it. Uh, the content is within the like all the YouTube videos and all the streams and stuff like that that I save. So I have all that content saved. I just have to go back and see which ones I want to choose for this book. Because it's the first of uh, a lot of, vari- not variations of them, but it's going to be like different things to be taught, right? Like an entire book can be filled with just foundational work. Like literally, I could fill up an entire like thousand page book with just foundational work and exercises. It would be a pretty big book, and I don't know if people would actually buy that, but I could. It's once you understand something, again, I I learn to understand how to teach. Right? Some people learn how to understand how to draw. Some people learn to understand how to sculpt. I learned how to teach. And by learning how to teach something, you learn a bunch of different ways that you can make variations of them. So even though I teach you guys the little egg, I know how to draw the ribcage in maybe like 10 different ways. And the body structures in a bunch of different ways. I can draw a body structure from a little square by just knowing where the overlapping lines go. Okay. Just by knowing how to overlap a simple beanbag, I can come up with a body really, really quickly. This leads to this. Akira Toriyama died today. Well, not today. I don't know if I, it's today, but he died. The guy that created Dragon Ball Z and Dr. Slump and all those, he passed away. That guy was a legend. So let's, uh, let's draw a dude making a spirit bomb. In his, so we'll have his arms up. We'll be gathering all the love for Akira Toriyama. The guy probably changed your life in some way or another without you even knowing it. Uh, he was such a big cultural pop like icon. Um. Very few cartoons or animations or anything will ever reach the levels at which Dragon Ball, like, touch the world. Okay? It's just not going to be, like, a thing that happens very often. And, you know, like, we should all commemorate him in some way or another just because of the respect. Just out of respect. How imaginable, like, how Cool and must have been to bin him, at least towards like the end part of his life, and even the beginning. Like that has been going on since like the nineteen thirties, nineteen thirties, nineteen eighties. And then the lighting would be from the ball, so most of the shadows would be on the bottom. That would be complete. Uh, no. Yeah, he will f- he will be missed. He will be very much missed. And he will be remembered forever much bigger than most of the people in Coco. Well, so if he, if there is an afterlife, uh he will be uh celebrating it in style. I promise you that. And when I die, I will shake his hand. Les pido que no pongan música, por favor. Estoy trabajando ahorita. Estoy re, estoy haciendo videos. Jesus Christ, every fucking time. 
Every fucking time. They're so, like, they can't just fucking come and go. They have to be fucking annoying. Have you seen Labyrinth? No, uh, I have not seen Labyrinth. What is Labyrinth? Here, let, me, let me close the door. Every single time I've tried to give a lesson this week, it's been an incredibly annoying fucking distraction, right? Like, it's always, like, one thing or another. It's, like, like I'm so tired of people coming into my house. Like, I'm so incredibly tired of people just annoying the shit out of me. <laughs> like, I just want to be able to create, not be disrupted, and then just... Go upon my way, man. So you guys can see how easy it is to post things, like in this method, right? Do you guys, like, realize that it's going to become, like, a joke for you guys to post things? Like, I'm not doing it from reference or anything. It's just... Just a matter of understanding where the body parts go and then just watching the cartoon. Labyrinth is an 80s movie with David Bowie. It has so many fun creatures and characters. Is that All Might? No, it's not All Might. It's Goku. <laughs> it's Kid Goku. He doesn't have the bubbly muscles and stuff. But we can always draw muscles. Oh, this pen, is it dead? How can it possibly dead? No, it's not dead yet. Again, compass at the top of your body will lead to a cylinder. Yeah, this is dead. Okay. So the compass will lead to the upper body, which will also lead to your pectorals, right? And it's going to lead to the edge of your arm, which is going to lead to your shoulders that wrap around that into your biceps that fill in right underneath your pectoral muscles. From there, you have your bicep in the front of your arm, not in the inside, in the front, that gets split by your uh, shoulder. Your shoulder splits your bicep and your tricep. And then from there, your forearm hugs your bicep. It hugs it. It goes around it. And then it goes down to your wrist, into your hand. When it hugs your bicep, that's what I mean. It goes around it. Okay. It will always go around your bicep. So a lot of the times you have to like think about that as you go around it. But the easiest way to do it is just to think of shapes like this. Okay, just think of two shapes that overlap each other and then choose which overlaps work. Just do two little shapes like this and you'll have the ability... to draw hands a little bit more dynamic. Let's see, let's draw a hand going this way. Then this is the tippy top of my shoulder. So any compass that I draw from here is gonna lead to my head. So if I draw a compass going this way, then my rib cage is here, my other arm is here. If I drew a compass going this way, that means that my other edge of my arm is here so that my back is here. There's a bunch of different ways to be able to create these things. Again, this is just one. Um, one thing that I noticed yesterday while working out was that if you draw a noodle from the back of your spine, you end up with your shoulders up until the first part of your shoulder blade. So you could do that. And then you draw your head coming up from there and then you have yourself shoulders. 
haven't really tried this in many different designs because it's the first time I try that. Well, not the noodle, but the actual noodle around the pectorals. That was an interesting one. So you end up with something like this, like a noodle. You end up with your head at the front, and then you have your arms coming out of there. Which could lead to really fun designs. The rib cage is an egg into my spine that leads to my hips. Into my legs. And this leg, let's see, we're gonna make him sprinting. The little starting point. And then your head just comes up from your spine, creating volume in the front. Interesting. Interesting. It works. I just need to figure out how to explain it. Does this Edge, outer edges. Okay, okay, you guys are thinking about it too much. Here, think about it like this. You're overthinking it. If your body's like this, right? Your legs are gonna come out of this bottom quadrant. Your arms can come out of this top quadrant. By doing that, you have a simple little chibi body. But this kind of looks like it's just like going like, yay, like a starfish. If you just change the direction in which your legs go, your legs go down. And then your arms go to the sides. You end up in a situation where the character looks like it has a body. Right? So that's, not, that's stage one. Then understanding how big you want your arms is just a matter of understanding the edge into the volume. So if you have this, if you want legs, you can bring the edge of your body down. And then you choose how wide you want those legs by deciding how thick you want these things to be. So you choose the outside contour first. And then you choose how much volume you go inside with. So if you want thicker legs, you just draw a bigger volume inside. This circle becomes bigger. This becomes thinner if the character has thinner legs. This sounds really dumb until you start doing things like over-the-shoulder shots. <laughs> that you go around the edge and then inside volume. Okay? You go outside edge, inside volume. And that is how those poses become so much easier. You find the outside edge of your body, and then you decide how thick do you want it to be inside. Outside edge, inside volume. Let's give him a beer. He's raging. <laughs> See what I mean, though? It's a lot easier. Hey, Rod, it's Charlie. Let me know when you are free to do a lesson. Um, I haven't been free all week, man. I have not been free all week, and I have... Um, my schedule is incredibly packed right now with, like, moving shit and, like, fixing my house. So I'm not prioritizing giving lessons uh, individually right now until I have everything set up. So if I haven't hidden back to you, if I haven't messaged you back, uh, it's because I'm dealing with a lot of shit on my own. And um, it's starting to get really overwhelming for me. And I can't like be doing things for other people while I have to look out for myself for now. So... Um, I'm trying to still be able to give my time to people in the way of streams so that you guys can still get some lessons and stuff. But it's been really, it's been tough for me to find time to do anything on my own for me. So now that I do have time, I'm going to take advantage of it. 
And that means prioritizing probably me over some other things. So it's going to, I don't want, to, I'm not being a jerk and I'm not saying I'm not going to like give you a lesson or whatever, but for right now, give me like a week or so to be able to actually like set my shit up because I need to do me for a little bit. Do you usually start with the body first? Depends on what I need to do. It really does depend on what I need to get done. If my character calls for a very uh, interesting, uh, a very interesting pose, then I'll go and I'll draw the pose first. And I'll draw the mass of the body first. If the character calls for more of like a like a face situation, I'll just start with the pose and then just give them like a semblance of shoulders and stuff with the compass. So once you understand. You're not going to have to choose which one you start with. You can start with either one. You're going to be able to do... You're going to be able to start with an eyeball if you wanted to, really. If you just wanted to draw an eyeball and start from there, we can do that. Um, that's a good exercise to do, by the way. If you guys want to see how your knowledge of mapping works, start with a random body part, like a hand. And see if you can build back your body from there. If you can, that means that you understand those mapping situations. If you can't, not saying it's not that you don't understand it, but it's going to be a, a matter of you probably drawing more from style than you are from knowledge. And you need to break that shit immediately. You need to like get out of that habit. You need to understand that art is hard. And art, at a certain level, becomes incredibly, incredibly hard. And if you don't keep pushing, you just never get there. If you don't keep pushing throughout most of your career, you just never really get there. And it's, uh, it's kind of sad. Because you work so hard, and then a lot of the times it's just because it's hard or like people get complacent, you know? People will start going like, oh, well, no, I think I'm good enough where I am. And not saying that you shouldn't be happy where you are, but it's a matter of just knowing that there's levels, there's deeper levels to this. I don't want lives. You guys just waste my time. Like, no joke. Like, I'm, it's not me being mean. You guys just literally just waste my time. Like, it's never a question. It's never a like, oh, my God. Hey, Rod. Can we learn? No, it's never like it's like. Hey, you want to play a game? Hey, you want a challenge? Hey, look at my look at my face. Hey, I'm just gonna like sit here. <laughs> like Jesus Christ! No wonder TikTok has like such a shitty reputation. People use it for just dumb stuff. You know, if people actually use it for what it is, like a source of like never-ending knowledge from people that are willing to be able to give that then, yeah, that'd be amazing, but no, no, very few people use it for that. Very interesting mapping points in the face. The eyebrow, the eyebrow of your face will always be the edge of your face, okay? This is what distinguishes the side of your face. So if you learn how to distinguish where your eyebrow goes, you'll always be able to know where the side of your face is. And you'll always be able to know how big one of your eyes is, which means that you can duplicate it. And then you end up in a situation where you can draw a little human skull in like two seconds. And then from there, you use that skull to be able to draw your characters. Meow, 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 meow. So, wherever your eyebrow goes, that is the side of your face. So that is one of the things that like so many people have issues with. Like I, I don't understand why people don't see that. Eyebrow, side of the face. So that is why that's why it's important to understand anatomy and just actually pay attention to shit. 
If you learn where an eyebrow goes, you now know where your temple goes, which means that you know where the side of your head goes, which means that you know where your ear goes because it's only split in half, which means that you know how to connect your chin to your front of your face. And then from there, you just need to leave a little bit of space for your nose bridge and draw a circle right underneath your eyebrow. And you have yourself access to a bunch of different things. God, my puppy is such a little whiny. He, he, he needs to be outside because they're doing uh, silicone repairs, right? They're like plastering and he hears me talk through the walls and he doesn't stop yapping unless I let him in. But unfortunately, he just can't. He can't get his way today. Today, he just can't. Normally, he does. <clears throat> now, I'm feeling a lot of lack of love here. We only have 7.5K uh, likes. By this time, we normally have about like 20 or 30. So I'm just saying, I'm feeling a little bit of lack of love here. Good morning, Miss Charms. How are you? <laughs> Oh no, I feel bad today. I was supposed to go hang out with you. And I couldn't because I got like all anxious and shit. What do you draw with? Is this just ballpoint pen? Yeah, it is just ballpoint pen. It's just a simple big pen. I like using uh, simple materials because then that means everybody can use them. Right? If I have simple materials like a big pen, like a cheap pen, a highlighter, you know, and I have a simple notebook that's not very expensive. Like, Illos are not very expensive. They're like 15 bucks, but they're so good. Like, they are a little bit more expensive than your average, like, you know, Walmart sketchbook, but it'll last you and you don't have to worry about the paper being shitty. You know, and then, like, the covers are nice and, like, hard. You know, and they open up flat every single page. So I totally recommend these guys. Like, they are my favorite sketchbook. And I hopefully, hopefully I get to do some uh, limited edition stuff with them. Uh, they said that uh, they wanted to do some limited edition stuff with me with the with their sketchbooks. So I got to see what that means. Like, what can I possibly do? Like, I want to release a limited edition sketchbook. That's super cool. That'd be dope. This is a Tombow pen. I, I need to get a new one. This one's already dry. I need to get them to sponsor me. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, 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 okay. This is not going to happen often, okay? This is not very happening very often. But I would love... I would absolutely love if you guys want to leave me like, oh, my God, I, because I'm going and gearing towards making my book. Right. So I need good reviews from people. So if someone, anyone here is willing to give like an in-depth review of what I have done to help them, I would absolutely love that. So anyone willing to do that will get a free ebook out of their choosing. Anyone that's willing to write a nice review, especially if you've already bought like one of my books, if you guys write me a review and you guys send me a picture of you guys with the review, I will give you guys a free ebook. I need, I need more content when it comes down to reviews so that I can sell myself more. But I need honest reviews. That's the thing. I, I don't need just like, like fluff. I hate fluff. Okay. You guys give me honest reviews of what I've helped you guys with. And then I will be more than happy to give you guys some, something in return. So, yeah, absolutely. Just send me a DM on Insta and let me know if you guys are down and I'll be more than happy to because uh, I need help at this point. I'm going to start being, I'm going to stop being the person that doesn't get help from people and I'm going to allow people to help me for once in my life, for once. 
For once, I'm going to allow it, and it's scary, but I'm going to... I'm going to fucking succeed. And there's nothing anyone's going to tell me otherwise. And I finally think I'm finally past that mindset of like being sad all the fucking time. So I'm going to take advantage of my newfound happiness mindset and try to do the best that I can. So, yeah. It shall be... A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful start to a new era. And I don't know why. I just feel like it's time now. You know, I think it's time now. Like, it's all, it's been planning for years, planning for years. It's time now. Time's go time. It's fucking go. <laughs> Do you have any tips on foreshortening? Yeah. You want to you wanna learn foreshortening in like 60 seconds? Okay, okay, how about this? If I teach you guys foreshortening in like two or three minutes, you guys have to get me to 35,000 likes. If I teach you guys that in like almost no time flat when it normally takes years to learn, you guys have to do that for me. Deal? Okay, so let's do this. So if you want to learn foreshortening, it's very, very, very simple. The concept of foreshortening is really, really hard because we are afraid to draw through our shapes. But I'm going to teach it to you really, really quick. Let's start with a circle. If we start with a circle and we draw another circle next to it, it's going to relatively feel like it's in the same plane. If you add a little bit of shadows underneath, it looks like it's the same place. It's exactly in the same section, right? If we draw one that's bigger, in general, it's going to look a little bit bigger because it's moving forward in space in both sections. So technically, in our horizon line, it's closer to us. When we draw something that is even bigger and overlaps, well, we start getting a semblance of coverage. Okay? We start getting a semblance of depth because now this, if there was a light, would be casting a shadow on the other one. But now let's break it down into the terms that we need, but for shortening. Now we'll make these instead of little circles. We're going to make them a cylinder by drawing and connecting all the top edges. So now we have a cylinder. A cylinder is just two circles connected at the edges. Okay? Now we're going to do the same thing that we did here. We're going to make one bigger. And we're going to connect the edges. This doesn't become hard, and it's still relatively easy to understand, right? When you start having issues with them covering entire sections of the other one, let's say that this one is the third one, like an extra section of this, and it's covering most of this, this is where people have issues. Because you still just connect the edges, but now you don't see a big majority of this bottom part. And little by little, when you're drawing things like limbs and stuff like that, you end up in a situation where sometimes you cover entire sections of the other parts and you don't see them. So people that are normally learning, they're barely learning, they're afraid to do that. They're afraid to draw through their shapes. So whenever they're drawing things like fingers and stuff like that, they're afraid to not either draw all the fingers or they're afraid to... uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're afraid of, but fingers are really versatile, so they can go in any direction you want. (laughs) It's just about learning how to connect the body that really makes the body look like a body. Now, because if I did this, would you tell me that that looks like a leg? Or do I need to make it look like all detailed like that to make it look like a leg? Is that a leg? That looks like a leg, right? And it's just little zigzags. But if you have them coming from the right place, that's all that really matters. If you have your leg coming from the right angle, the right place of your body, it doesn't matter what type of leg you draw. It's going to look like a leg. And the same thing with the arms. If you know what angle the arms come out from, 
Doesn't matter if you draw them skinny or bulky or like supersized, it's going to look like an arm. So most of your studies, when it comes down to anatomy, are going to have to not be based on, oh, how do I draw that shoulder muscle? How do I draw that, like, all those fibers? No, just think about where it connects so that you can understand the flow of it so that you can move it in any direction you want. Once you learn this, this becomes easy because that's just dressing up your character. That's just adding volume to sections and then just doing it like that. That's not the hard part. That's the easy part. Like adding muscles and stuff like that, that's the easy part. That's just connect the dots. Like that's all it is. Breasts, all that stuff. That's Once you have your basic structure right, it's all connecting the dots to different things because you already have the basic structure there. And when you have, for example, like a mapping point like your eyebrow, you can do that and use that to reverse engineer the rest of your face if you want more detail. That is why we learn anatomy, and that is why we learn perspective, and that is why it's important to do that. And if you don't do that, if you don't think about things like that, and if you don't actually focus on learning this stuff, like, ooh, let's draw a cylinder over and over and connect them, you know, that's, that's how you learn that. But for shortening, it's just a matter of understanding how to overlap circles and connect the edges. And that's it. Once you learn how to move those in space without being intimidated, that's, that's all that is. That's all there is to it. You just need to learn how to connect circles and be okay drawing through your shapes. And that's foreshortening. Like this guy, right? If I wanted this hand forward, I can just draw the hand really big. And then I know my end point, I know my beginning point. And all I gotta do is just draw it in. And a lot of the times it just, it's that simple. It's just people think too much about like the muscles and everything and they're worried about like the look of it, the style before they even know how to set it in right. So that is the biggest issue when it comes down to perspective and foreshortening and, you know, stuff like that. People are afraid to draw through their shapes. Oh, where is it? Right. So it's easy for them to not be able to see it for the simplicity that it is. It's not overly hard. It's just annoying to have to draw through your shapes and learn overlaps and stuff like that. But in all reality, that's all fingers, that's all that hands are, you know, that's all that limbs are in general. It's just a big connection of like overlapping bean bags that are just circles being connected with ovals, circles and ovals, circles and ovals. You deserve the world? Not really. Um, <clears throat> a lot of this stuff is taught, but it's regurgitated in ways that like don't make sense. A lot of the times, a lot of this information is regurgitated in like, you know, like, ooh, the way the masters would have taught it. Ooh, well, it's only the way that this is supposed to be taught. Ooh, this is the only... No, shut up. Like, no, no, no. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> You're not going to tell me that those people did not come up with this shit on their own, too. You know, like, like you're telling me that a person that has access to the whole Internet, the whole Internet, access to other professionals, access to uh, knowledge in the world, and I can't come up with something that a master did? Nah, 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 nah. Nah, I'm a master of my own right. Let's do this. Yeah, my art has actually started getting better since I've started watching your lives. Woohoo! Rosie, Rosie the artist. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. People make art intimidating. Well, the thing is, people do that on purpose. People do that on purpose. If I can make something look like it's unattainable, 
right? If I make you see you like you see me draw, and I'm drawing like, oh my God, look at how quick he is. Oh, look at I'll never get to that level. The moment that I get you to think like that, the moment that my price skyrockets out of like out of this world when it comes down to like my commissions towards you, my way that I'm going to talk to you as a client, the way that I'm going to approach you as a fan, as a follower, everything changes the moment that you give me that power. I hate that so much. <laughs> I hate it so much. I hate that animosity that comes with like intimidating other people and like making yourself feel like you're much more important than them because you are able to see things that they can't yet, right? And I say yet because I was one of those people that didn't know what the fuck they were doing. I didn't know how to draw an eye. I didn't know how to draw volume. I didn't know how to draw a sphere. And I had to teach myself this stuff because I saw everybody else had a really easy time doing it. So I was like, if someone else has an easy time doing this, it can't be an impossibility. Like if someone else can do it competently, I can do it competently. Fuck this. I'm going to do it. You know, it's it's not an if, but, or coconuts. It's I'm always going to do it. Now, how long it would take to get there yeah, it might be a different story. You know, not a lot of people have the level of uh, uh, of commitment that is required to be able to achieve the things that you want to do. Or, consequently, not a lot of people have the, the patience to be able to withstand drawing all the boring shit according to other people, because I don't find this boring. But all the boring stuff over and over, knowing that eventually something is going to click. And when that thing clicks... That is when you have access to all that knowledge freely, right? Knowing how to take all these little elements like boxes and learning how to do things with them like connecting points and stuff like that, it takes time to do this stuff and to make it look right, to make it look easy, to make it look decent, to make it look like it makes sense. It takes a lot of time sometimes and that comes with a lot of drawing on empty pieces of paper and then just filling up entire pages with crap like this. But again, you have to actually enjoy this stuff. If you don't enjoy learning and exploring your own brain, art is going to be a very difficult career for you, especially when you try to be a, a more independent person rather than an employee. When you just want to be an employee, you, you can just go to work and do your job and come home, man. Like, it's, it's not hard. Being an employee is the easiest thing in the world. You collect an, a check and you depend on somebody else to be able to, like, all right, man. Oh, can you, like, make sure I get paid? Cool. Done. Easy peasy. Like, it's the easiest shit in the world. Having to do something for yourself and try to build something for yourself that tends to be a little bit harder. And when you have to be the one putting the creative energy in, 100%, not with the input of other people or anything like that, or a boss to tell you what to do, uh, that leads to very, very, very interesting situations. And it really does test you in the areas of creativity or you know, just overall knowing what you know. So... If you want to see what you're made out of, try to make a living out of money. Try to make money with your art. And don't see it as a negative. Don't see it as like, a, oh my God, I, you're telling me to go make money, Rod. Money's the root of all evil. But it's also what feeds you. And that's what's going to allow you to be able to draw for the rest of your life. So instead of seeing it like something evil, you need to learn how to make that money with something you enjoy so that you can actually not feel icky. It's hard for me. I'm a one-man person. I'm a one-man army. And I've been a one-man army for the last 15 years. 
I have a little bit of support now in the form of like friends like Wes and like, you know, other people. But up until recently, I did everything on my own, dude. There is no, there is no pity here for someone doing it on their own because most of us will have to do it on our own. Most of us will have to venture onto this little like journey with nothing else rather than just the fucking heart that we have for it. And then hopefully, hopefully someone fucking pays attention to us. That is the reality of things. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to. Because they don't have a reason to. Right? You will always be your number one fan. You will always be your number one fan. And if you're not your number one fan, then what's going on with you? Because if you don't love your art, if you don't follow and you don't love your journey, then why should anybody else care? So your goal is not to do something to make someone else happy and cool and like you don't want that. You don't want to be that person that just creates content for other people. Be the person that creates content for yourself. And then from that point on, figure out how you make that content happy and uh, viable for someone else. And when that happens, you find that happy synergy. You find that happy medium. You find that happy, like, I can do this all fucking day type of situation. Right? And you're like, woohoo, at that point. Okay, so this is my cheekbone. I'm learning how to, like, map the cheekbone a little bit better. Then I make my teeth line. My teeth line and my cheekbone in between those two. That's where my mouth sits. And then I have negative space that fill in and tell me where my teeth go. Yay. No guessing. I'm learning another mapping point, which is that triangle gives you access to where the side of your mouth is going to be. So I'm still working on that one. So if we draw a face and we find that initial triangle, that triangle doesn't only just give us our eye sockets and our mouth space, but if you follow the triangle down, it gives you a rough idea of where your mouth is going to be and your angles for your chin, which is really cool. And I was just observing my own body while I was working out yesterday to see if that was like the case. So I'm still figuring it out. That's another thing that I'm like, I'm constantly just looking at different things too. So when I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. But I have figured out one thing is that when you draw your cheekbones, you can just extend that down a little bit and it creates a little pocket. That little pocket means that all this area right here is playable with. Right? That means that I can make this an old person by making that smaller. I can make this a big superhero dude by making the jaw a lot bigger. It just becomes like this addition extra little part. Right? That whole section just becomes playable with. And it's interesting for character design purposes. So once I figure that out, I'll let you guys know. I'll make a little video on that and everything. But triangle, following that triangle to the side and to the edges gives you so much information. So from here down to the side of the face, which would be right here. It, it works a little bit. I still haven't figured out why it works, but it works. <laughs> how do you know how big the side of the head is? Depends on the style you want to do. So I can have a character that has these proportions and be perfectly okay. I can have a character have these proportions and be perfectly okay. It's all about understanding how your body parts fit within each other. Okay? 
if you understand the ratios that have to be in the things that have to be within a space, then you don't have to worry so much about having a perfect shape. You can have any shape you want, and as long as you understand where a couple things go, you can draw yourself a human in those specific body parts. Okay? Understanding where your cheekbones, where your temples, where your eyebrow is, right? We mentioned that. The eyebrow is the side of the temple. So wherever the eyebrow hits, that is where your mass for the rest of your head is going to be. So if you understand that, you can draw any shape, split it in two, consider this the edge of your head, that means that your eyebrow is going to be there. Split this in half, match that eyebrow, and you have yourself all the guidelines you need to be able to draw your face. That eyebrow trick is incredibly useful. Oh my God, let me go check on my dog because he's like whining like Down and don't eat my cables. Good. All right. So where were we? Uh, what is that? There's something underneath my chair. Anyways, don't eat my cables, baby. Anyways, so you can make a head out of any shape. Uh uh. Come over here. Where are you going? You wanted to come in, right? Okay, so, iteration. If you want to find the shape and the profile of any head, uh, find your eyebrows. Your eyebrows will normally fall within the first fourth of your face. About a first fourth, within this area, you can just draw your eyebrows. Wherever the eyebrow fits, that is going to mark one third of your head. That means that you need another third and another third to be able to complete your head. Once you have that, you have your eyebrow, you have the side of your face, you can just draw a little circle and split that circle in half to draw your ear. Cool, so the bottom of your face is obviously your chin. So you have to connect here to here, boom. Make it a curve, don't make it a line. Like stop making it like because nobody has a jaw structure like that. Just draw a curve. Oh my God, fractions, it's not math. <laughs> it's not like I'm asking you to come up with the, like, the ratio of pi. <laughs> yeah, dibujé algo cool. So yeah, it's... So once you find that, then you find yourself your head. Um, the same thing happens when it comes down to drawing things in three quarters and stuff. Once you find your midline, if you find this eyebrow, let's say you draw that eyebrow, right? And I have my socket for that. Duplicate this. Don't make it thinner, bigger. Just duplicate this and bring it right there. Just duplicate it right there, right next to it the spacing in between is going to give you a little triangle. That little triangle can become your muzzle. From your eyebrow to the side of your face, that is the side of your face. At the top of that little triangle, that is where your eyeball sit. 
you draw your eyelids over your eye. So your eyeball, boop, boop, eyelids over the eyeball. This is my nose canal, right? If I draw a dot and I connect the points, I have myself a pyramid. That pyramid can very be easily be drawn into a nose. If I draw the dot in a different direction, the nose goes in a different direction. Ooh, great, woohoo, so weird and difficult, huh? So from there, I'm gonna draw a dot. I connect all three, and I have my nose. Boom. From here, from this point to the top, I can draw a little line, and that becomes my cheekbone line, so my cheeks will not pass that point. That's my cheekbone limiter, that's my cheekbone frontier. So any volume that I want to give here, it's not going to pass that point. And then my mouth just fits within that space. <laughs> the ear goes about half of the way up the face. And you end up with that. This is how I do caricatures. When I go out in public and I'm trying to figure out how to draw someone, I try to find this eye first. Because this eye gives me the eyebrow, which means that this side is going to be the side of my face. And that means that this is going to be where my cheekbone lies. So when I'm drawing someone in public, I have all those mapping systems already set up. And I don't have to worry about a bunch of things or where they go. Because I already have them kind of roughed out in my head. And since everything's connected... All I have to do is make sure that those elements fall within that space. And then it just becomes my level of understanding how to draw through my shapes, how to overlap them, how to like stylize them. But that is essentially how I go about drawing things. That is my procedure. You guys can take it or, you know. And it works really nice. She, she just said she finished it to the review and switched, what? I don't know what the hell you just said. How do you draw hair? Sometimes I don't know where the chat is. Like, honestly, like, you guys talk about some weird shit. I like I like randomly look up and I'm like, who the fuck is Jaden? <laughs> who is who's Zayden? Like I've never heard of these names. You gotta get those markers. They're nothing like they're nice, but they're just alcohol markers. Right? Like, I'll be an honest. I give an honest review about everybody. Like, it doesn't matter if they send to me for free. Like, they're just alcohol markers. They're not like, um, if you get Copics, they'd be more expensive than these, but they'd be about the same. They'd be the same thing. Like, once you, once you try alcohol markers once, it doesn't become hard. It doesn't change. Like, the Prismacolor ones are the same thing as these. There, that's there's not really big differentiation. Copics are good. I mean, Copics are nice. They're pretty. They're expensive as all hell, but they're pretty. All right. What else do you guys want to learn? What else do you want? To learn from your old teacher, Rodgon. <laughs> the neck. Well, okay. We talked about the neck a little bit, but let's talk about the neck in more depth. So the neck is going to connect and start at the back of your spine, right? So once you find that circle for your head, the back of that circle becomes your spine. <laughs> so... Once you find the spine, your rib cage is like an egg. We talked about this. And then you connect the chin to the body. Now, obviously, that's a little body for that guy. But... 
So the egg at the top of the rib case connected to the back of the spine, it gives you your neck. Can you read my comments? I don't spend time looking at your comments, dude. Like, I'm, I, and If you're asking me to do that, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't like being told what to do. If, if your comment naturally comes into my view, then I can see it and answer it. Do you know how many people we have on here at any given time? I'm not individualizing anybody. So don't, like, don't, like, start sh- stuff like that. That's just, no. I don't take entitlement really, really well. So please don't do that. Mm-hmm. How do you draw the face proportions? Um, well, proportions of the face are normally going to fall within the rule of thirds. Right? If you think of rule of thirds and you divide all your faces into thirds, if you fit all your features within one of those areas, you end up with a variation or ability to have variation within your styles. Really easy. So there's no real mega proportions that you need to keep in mind. You just need to make sure that you leave space for other things. Like if you are drawing your forehead, make sure that this upper section, this upper third has your hair and your forehead. This middle section is gonna have your eyes, your eyebrows, your, this is your feature zone. So it's going to be your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, and then the bottom part is going to have your mouth and your chin. So if you learn to divide that into those three, you're going to have a much easier time when it comes down to drawing faces. Because all you got to do is figure out that midsection. We already know that wherever our eyebrow is, it's going to be about the half, right? So our eyebrow already divides that section, so we already have that. From here, I can just go to the outside edge and just draw that same eyebrow coming in or draw that eye and then draw that eye inside. My nose is going to be within that section or at least the base of my nose. The nose can actually come down because of the cartilage, but it's going to start at least at the base. My ears are going to fall about in that midsection, splitting that in half, Gives you that mapping point for your ear all the time. And then from there, just go down. Make sure to draw through your shapes. If you have a big nose, it would be underneath the nose. And then, ta-da! Trying to send it, but we aren't mutually friended here. They are called touch markers. Uh, Are they called touch markers? No, these are illo hue. Anyways. So once you find that circle, your eyebrow gives you the side of your face, which gives you your ear, and it gives you the back of your spine. The back of your spine connects to the back part of your rib cage. So if you draw an egg with a circle like that, you end up in a situation where you have an actual ribcage. A compass will give you access to your pectorals, your shoulders, and all that other stuff. And once you find your chin, you can connect your chin back onto this. Depending on your level of fitness, it's going to be either really, really ragged or you're going to have a little bit more filled in. So that's depending on the level of fitness of the person. And that is how you are able to draw profiles and stuff like that a little easier. So the eyebrows are important. Learning how to and where to draw them is important. Learning how that's a mapping point is important. Because guess what? 
It's not as hard as we make it. Draw an eyebrow. I have the side of my face. So I draw a circle from the eyebrow. Cool. Once I touch an eyebrow, done. From there, find a triangle and then go around my eyebrows. I have myself my eye sockets and my cheekbones. Then from there, I draw a teardrop down and I have myself access to my chin. Style is going to be dependent on what you want to achieve. But in all reality, it's that simple. Body proportions come in the way of understanding two basic shapes, your egg and your hip bones. If you think about an egg in a circle, you can draw the whole body really, really easy. Because all of them are half guides. Now, proportions for the body are going to depend on how big you make this compass and how big you make the hip bones. Let's say that we leave the rib cage the same size for all these. Okay? But we're going to change the size of that compass, small, large, and massive. By changing the size of these, it changes the amount of space that I need to fill in with muscle. So if I need to fill in a bigger area, your muscles are just going to be bigger. If you need less space to fill in with muscle, your muscles are going to be considerably smaller. And if you want really big muscles, make that bulk really large so that it can actually look like that. That is how you change the size of the upper body. Now, the lower body, let's leave the same rib cage. If we make the hip bones bigger, smaller, or leave them the same, it changes the way the character looks. So when you start combining things like your collarbones being differently sized, you end up getting a ton of variations of sizes and styles. And it's up to you to choose which ones make more sense for your characters. But you already have access to all those guidelines and you have access to all those body parts. You just need to learn how to connect them in different ways. Know what I mean? So once you have an egg and a circle and a compass and a circle, you can start posing your characters in fun, interesting ways without much of a struggle. Because you're not leaving anything to guesswork. You're not letting anything be like, well, is this supposed to be here? No, like it's everything has a mapping point. And if you guys have any questions about these, I have videos, entire videos about every single body part. So you guys can go watch them on YouTube. You guys can watch all the tips and tricks that I have on TikTok and Instagram, on YouTube. You know, I have like thousands and thousands of resources for you guys. Thousands at this point. It's, it's getting really, really big up there and like resource wise. So eventually you're getting to get to the point where you can make any shape, not an egg. And then you'll just be able to draw the circles instead of having to come up with that whole body part. And you'll be able to use that to be able to create your characters. Okay, it's going to come down to it eventually, it's going to take a while. It'll take a while to get there. But you guys will. Mustache. Oh, there you are. You're underneath the chair. Why are you hiding? Ooh, maybe I should make his bed. Like That would be kind of cool to have like a little desk that has like a little doggy bed inside. So he can just chill with me whenever I'm streaming. Can you see the puppy? Yeah. Puppy time. Puppy time. Puppy break. Look at his little cute face. Oh, oh look at you, so cute.
And you guys want to see my backdrop? Get this going nicely. All right, it's still a work in progress, and I have like my whole desk's a fucking mess. But it's starting to look, and it's gonna end up looking. I'm not brown. I'm Mexican. <laughs> Does that count? Hmm, curly mustache. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the drawing. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. So, oh, do I have like a sultry, uh, you know, like James Earl Jones voice? Like, Luke, I am your father. No! No! It can't be! No! <laughs> so to draw the back, it's the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? What are you doing? Can't eat that? Uh-uh. Those are cables. I need those. You want to eat? You know what? The Vader never said that. Well, I did. So I don't care if Vader didn't say it. I'd say it. <laughs> he ain't original like me. I'm built different. <laughs> uh, anyways. Now, uh, let's see. So recap, let's recap because we're running out of space. So recap time. Uh, we talked a little bit about the actual human figure. So we talked about how to connect the head to the rib cage, And we broke it down to an egg and a cylinder and a compass. If you learn how to do that, then you're going to be able to learn how to draw bodies like this. These bodies are very, very malleable and very easy to position because it teaches you a bunch of different ways of how to manipulate this stuff. So once you understand that, understanding how they flow and just circulating into your normal body systems is going to be a little bit easier. Adding that sort of motion to things becomes a lot simpler when you start learning how the body just flows. So we talked about that and we talked a little bit about foreshortening. Then we went into drawing a little bit of the features of the face and giving you guys ideas of how you can start using your facial features in the right place. Talking about the manipulation of the shapes, how to find the eyebrows to find the side of the head. That was one of the biggest and coolest things that I've found in a long time, by the way. So if you guys didn't get a chance to catch that, anywhere you draw your eyebrow, that is going to be the side of your face. So you can use that as a different guideline to be able to give yourself an idea of how wide your bodies are supposed to be. If your eyebrow is too close to the edge, you're not gonna have a lot of space, but you can make it more of a frontal shot, which is perfectly fine. So consider that your eyebrow is going to hit the temple, which hits the side of your face. And if anything, if anything, if you keep anything from today, just keep that, because that's going to be incredibly helpful for you. Now, if you have a, a tendency of drawing your eyebrows over and like stylizing them like that, just remember that your nose bridge guides you to your eyebrows. Your nose bridge guides you to your eyebrows. So if, even if you do draw them up here, you can always know where they land, but don't draw that detail there. Knowing allows you to be creative. Not knowing and guessing keeps you from getting there. So understanding is the key. Understanding is always the key. Do I have videos on animals? I have a, a bunch of videos on animals. Um, you can go check them out on my YouTube though. Uh, I don't have anything organized. I need, I need an intern or something to... Uh, to come like organize my YouTube channel. Anybody want free internship? <laughs> I provide room and board. <laughs> I have an extra room. <laughs> Who wants to come draw and learn from me? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna offer that up to someone. Like somebody will take it. Somebody will take that concept and like run with it. Um, I don't know how I would like facilitate it, but like if anybody's actually really driven and they want to learn hands first, like how to do that, I might offer up the chance to just like come stay for like a week and see what it's like so that you can actually get an idea if it's something that you want to do to give like people like an experience. Who's 27? Your daughter might? Um, I don't know how that would function. Hmm. I never really thought of that. Like how would, how would like bringing in a person of the opposite sex into a household work without it being like weird? Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to think about that. Hmm. ¿Cómo te llamas en YouTube? Igual. I know we're a little tight on space, but do you have any advice on face syndrome? Same face syndrome? Uh, change your faces. You, you probably have learned through style, right? So if all your faces have that same smirk, you know, that, that same little like laugh or that same eye or whatever, uh, take one of these drawings, try to like trace it really lightly, right? And then change the way the mouth is. Change the way the eyes go. Like change it a little bit. And then play around with that. And then you go and then you try another way. You try to modify it. And then little by little, you start seeing the limitations of what your face can do. I live in TJ, so that's the problem. I live in Tijuana, California. So I live in Mexico. So that is another reason why it's harder for people to come. Because I live in Mexico. So I'm trying to find somebody local that is willing to learn from me because I want to teach someone, like, I want to teach someone directly. Like, I haven't gotten a chance to teach at a college or an art school, you know, so I want to get that experience of teaching someone directly in front of me. And the only way I'm going to do that, it seems, is by just making it happen on my own. Uh, if I don't make it happen for myself, I don't think anybody really gives a fuck if I teach at a school and it's not important to anybody else. So again, be your own fan, be your own number one fan and pursue the things that you want because no one else is going to really care about the things that are important to you. It's just life. That's just being an adult. The things you like aren't always going to be important to other people. And other people have important things that they want to do. So no one really has the time to be dealing with your shit. You know what I mean? We all have our own thing that we're trying to push. And if you don't push it for yourself, don't expect anybody else to do it for you. Because it's not a given. It's not an entitlement thing. It's not simply something that you just get because you want it. You have to really fucking push for it. And sorry for the crudeness, sorry for the crassness, but in all reality, if it's not told like that, then a lot of people don't really understand it. So sometimes I do have to be like that. Because otherwise people don't understand. <laughs> Learning as a teacher is fun. Uh, when does your love usually start? My love starts when someone shows me some sort of uh, affection towards me. I know you meant live, but yeah. <laughs> My live start at 8.30 in the morning. So 8.30 a.m. Almost every single day. I try to do it at the same time every single time. Uh, my friend Wes goes on at 8 or a little bit earlier than 8, I think. Uh, and he does like an intro level class that you guys can have access to and another resource that you guys can make use of. So if you guys really feel like learning, then that's something that you guys can do. I got myself a Green Lantern ring. So. All right. So we are done for today, everybody. Thank you so much for being my sketching buddies. If you guys feel like supporting, there are books and resources you guys can find through my links to be able to support what I do. Uh, 
essentially I run off of whatever you guys buy. So that is my source of income right now. So I encourage you guys to go uh, go buy stuff. <laughs> but only because you guys get cool stuff out of it. I'll try to get another book out this week. I'm going to try my hardest to get that animal book done this week. And if I can get that done, then I can move on to more of uh, the how to draw book like series. And I can start giving you guys previews and stuff like that as well. So that'll be really, really, really fun. But for now, our time is done. Oh, oh, oh. no, don't go, Rod Gun, don't go. Oh, we are not done reading. Oh, we're not done learning. Don't do it to us. No. Oh, unfortunately, I, I have to go because I have to do stuff. I have to actually set up my house. So that just means that you guys are going to have more content tonight too, though. But it means much, much, much cooler stuff coming in the future. You guys are awesome. You guys are right. If you guys want to learn some more, there is a YouTube channel with over 450 videos now. Over 450 videos, just like this one, just as informative and just as good, but just different topics. So go watch them, go subscribe, help me get to the 100,000 K. I almost, almost there, almost 100,000 K on YouTube. And then I get a plaque and I get a cool plaque and I get to be the coolest uncle in the world because I get to be a YouTuber uncle. Uh, so yeah, help me out with that. Uh, share my stuff. If you guys learned anything, just share it. That is the way that you guys help me. You guys don't have to buy anything. Just share anything that helped you. And hopefully that helps other people. Um, because that's my goal. Take care, everybody. Love y'all. Jesus, you okay? Yeah, you're okay. Jesus Christ, puppy. Oh, <laughs> this is still on. <laughs> He's okay. He's okay. He just got scared. All right, later, Gators.